You want to draw. You want to get into art. Cool. Here's a pencil and a paper. And you're like, no, no, no. I want to draw on that, that computer looking thing. But maybe you're not sure where to start. You want to get something good, but you don't want to wind up like your uncle who lost all his money investing in that burrito factory. Well, you, my friends, are in luck because today's video is all about digital art for beginners. Hello, my name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals. We're talking about illustrators, designers, that one guy who has this amazing startup idea, he just needs to figure out the logo first. Intro to digital art, we're talking about a huge topic here. And so I've boiled it down to three sections. The first section we're gonna be talking about is the hardware. What do you need? What do you need to buy in order to start drawing digitally? The second part we're gonna be covering is the software. What apps are even out there? What's good to draw on? What's gonna help you out? And the third part is all about the art itself. Once you get your hardware and your software set up, then what do you do? Where do you practice? How do you get started? How do you get better? So we're gonna be covering a lot of ground and we're gonna be doing it pretty quickly. So I'm not gonna really have time to get into the details of a lot of these things, especially when I'm talking about the apps that I'm using or the hardware that I'm talking about, but I have links to all of that stuff. If you just type in brad.site slash start, you're gonna get to my page where I'm gonna list links to my other reviews and resources that you can use that I'm talking about in this video. Are you ready? I know I'm ready. Can we get a funky beat up in here? No, I was, th I was thinking more like something danceable maybe. I don't know, onto the hardware. Hardware comes in all shapes and sizes and unfortunately all kinds of prices. We're talking $20 for the cheapest little Huion tablet, all the way up to thousands for like the Wacom Cintiq Pros. So you're starting out, you want the cheapest thing in the world, no commitment, a pen tablet isn't a bad place to start. They're these little flat tablets, they don't have screens, they come with a pen, they plug into your computer, draw on the tablet with your pen, a line appears on the computer screen in front of you, it's kind of like a fancy mouse. I made a whole video on the cheapest one you're going to find, which is called the Huion 420. Okay, I know, it's it's a funny name. We can stop leaving comments now. The 420 is only 20 bucks, and it totally works. If you're willing to spend a little bit more, though, you can get a huge jump in quality with something like Wacom's entry-level Intuos tablet, XP Pen's Deco Pro is really good, Huion's HS610 is worth looking into. These are going to give you a lot larger of a drawing area, which is going to make it easier to do a lot of detail work without having to zoom in. Also, the pen quality on these things, they're a big jump up from that $20 tablet. I know they cost more, but this is one area where you can get a lot more bang for your buck by jumping up a level or two. One drawback to these, and probably the biggest drawback to these, is you have to train yourself how to use them. It's like learning to ride a bike again, because your image is on the screen in front of you, and your pen, you're drawing down here while looking over there, you've got to build up that eye-hand coordination. It could be tough. A lot of people, like myself included, find it just a lot easier to draw on the screen. And that's where our next category comes into play. We're talking about pen displays. In fact, I've got one right here. It's really big. I could use a hand, guys. These things come in all sizes and shapes. This one here is a 22-incher. I'm gonna put you down, buddy. These are monitors that plug into your computer and you can draw on them directly using the included pen. There's one crazy important thing about these you need to know. You need a computer. These don't work without a computer. It needs to be plugged in to a computer. It looks like an iPad. It looks like a Windows tablet. It's not. There's no computer here. It's just a screen, albeit a fancy screen you could draw on, but it's still just a screen. These come in all sizes and shapes and price points and quality levels, and I've reviewed a ton of these. They're going to work on Windows computers. They're going to work on Mac computers really well. One thing to know, they don't really work on Chromebooks, unfortunately, at least not yet. Price-wise, you can find this cute little XP Pen 12-inch starting about $200 on Amazon. Huion makes a really good 12-inch too. It's not that much more expensive. If you wanna get a brand name like Wacom, the newer Wacom One is a little bit bigger. It's gonna run you about $400. I personally really like the 16-inchers. The 16-inchers are a little bit bigger, so you're gonna see the interface. It's easier to tap on things using the pen. However, it's small enough that when you're not using it, you can slide it to the side. Now, the bigger ones, on the other hand, you could use those as your primary monitor. Most of them are pretty easy to just prop up in front of 
of you at a, at a normal angle when you're not drawing, but they are big. They're gonna take up most of your desk. One thing to note is these inexpensive ones, they do not have touch screens. The pens work on the screens, your fingers, not so much. Wacom Cintiq Pro line does have touch screens. Those are really nice, but they're also pretty expensive. Touch is nice, but I often turn it off because palm rejection is hit or miss, and I'm always accidentally, you know, turning off layers or turning on the wrong tool with the palm of my hand. Lastly, we have these all-in-one tablets that you can draw on, something like the Surface Pro or the iPad or Android tablets. These are full-blown computers that you can get a pen for and draw directly on them. Of course, the drawback here is since you're having everything right there, these are going to be significantly more expensive, at least usually. You can get an Android tablet to draw on for $200. That's fairly inexpensive for this category, but also the quality is really meh, not very good. If you're in the market for a brand new computer, a Windows 2-in-1 might be a great option for you because you're not only getting your drawing tablet, but you're getting your computer at the same exact time. I've used several of these. Some of them have great pens like this HP. Some of them, like this Acer, are, are really amazing computers, but I wasn't that impressed with the pen. So from tablet to tablet, computer to computer, the, the pens here can be hit or miss. They're not necessarily designed specifically for art. And so that's something to pay attention to before you invest a lot of money. I personally do most of my work on the iPad Pro. It's also pretty expensive, but the entry-level iPad does work with the Apple Pencil now, and it's a surprisingly good experience. In fact, it's just as good of a drawing experience as you're going to get on the iPad Pro. That entry-level iPad with a pencil is going to set you back about $429, which is a lot of money, but dollar for dollar, it is a really good value, and if you're just starting out in digital art, you're getting a lot for your money. No compromised drawing experience. You can watch movies on it. There's some great drawing apps. You get the idea. So let's talk about software. Still a little off on the music here, guys. To draw on your computer, you're going to need an app or a program that you can draw in. And you guys, you guys, there are some great programs that are absolutely free. There are some great programs that you can pay for too, but there's three that are definitely worth checking out if you've already spent all your money on your hardware and you wanna get into the software game kind of inexpensively to just start learning. The first one of those is Krita. Uh, I would go to krita.org. I think it costs money in the Windows Store, but if you go to the website, that one's free. There's another one called Autodesk Sketchbook. It's free, you have to make an account and log in, but it's available on several platforms as well. And the last one is Medibang Pro, which again is free. It's available on pretty much everything. So that's worth checking out too. Some of the apps I like to use personally on the iPad, I like Procreate. I like the fluidity of pinching and zooming and being able to use touch gestures to control things. On a Windows tablet, for the same reasons, I like an app called Sketchable. A little bit more expensive, but still a really good drawing sketching app. If you need to go with some pro-level software, creative design software, Photoshop is, is really good. It's really big. It's also really expensive. Comes with a monthly subscription price tag. Another one, if you don't want to spend that much money, is Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. I think Affinity Designer is probably better for illustration. You know, that's a one-time cost of $40 on the iPad and I think $60 on the desktop. But there's so many other apps out there. Paint Tool Sci, Clip Studio. There's some really good ones, you just have to do some digging. One thing to keep in mind is not every piece of software is available on every single platform. For example, Photoshop, at least full Photoshop, is only available on the desktop, not necessarily the iPad, and definitely not Android. It goes the other way too. One of my favorite drawing apps, Procreate, not available for anything other than the iPad. Something to keep in mind if you have your favorite drawing app that you wanna use is make sure that you're buying into the platform that you can actually use it on. Part three, let's get to the drawing, and it looks like you guys got the music going pretty well now. Good job. Now you're ready to start, and the real question is, is where and how? Well, good news is you're already on YouTube, and I think this is the best platform to start on. There are so many drawing tutorials available for free right here if you just go up to that search box. And at the end of this video, I'll put in a playlist of some of my tutorials, so if you wanna check those out, 
go for it. There are also paid resources out there. I've been taking a figure drawing course by someone named Proko. Now this is a couple hundred dollars, so it's not exactly cheap, but this is like one of the best figure drawing courses in the world, taught by one of the best teachers of this in the world, and you're getting it for a couple hundred dollars. Here in the US, if you went to art school for a class like that, it would cost thousands. So it is possible if you're driven enough and you don't need direct feedback from professors to buy online courses and take college level courses basically at home and teach yourself. You can even just learn how to use one app at a time. For example, I have courses on Procreate and Illustrator and Affinity Designer. I'll link those down below. So here's here's the thing I want you to keep in mind. Let's 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 do a little close up here. Oh, okay, this is a bad idea. So here's where I'd start if I was starting from scratch, brand new today and just learning art. One there's a reason that you've gotten into digital art. There's a reason that you have an interest in this. Maybe you wanna illustrate your own stories. Maybe you wanna create your own characters. Maybe you want to add some flair to your design work or something like that. There is a reason. So the first thing I would say is draw what you love. Make sure that there is some passion behind it because if there is, you're going to continue to learn and you're going to continue to drive yourself forward. The second thing I would do is I would intersperse that with like lessons, find things you're not good at. Realistic faces, backgrounds, hands. Oh, I hate hands. But go out, find tutorials on how to do those things and mix that in with your passion work. What you wanna do is you want to do what you love while also growing at the same time. If you just do the thing that you enjoy doing, you're gonna find yourself sticking in a rut. You're gonna find yourself drawing symbols and you're gonna draw them over and over and over again. You're not gonna learn anything new. But I often find if I just dive in and try to teach myself something new every single time, the same thing happens. It gets stale, I lose interest. You have to find that balance. So if you're just starting out, do the thing you love, but also put in little lessons in between where you could learn new things. And what you're gonna find looking back two, three, four, five months later is you're gonna start to see your work incrementally improve. It takes patience, takes time, but it's totally worth it. Keep it up. So if you're wondering where do I go next, go over here to some videos where you can learn some more things, some of the other work that I've done. Also subscribe to this channel to keep up with things in the future. So. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you in a couple of days.